Hi, I'm Sue. Welcome to createwithsue.com and today we are going to do an applique towel topper. So you can put this applique design on anything that you choose uh, but what I'm making I want to fit into a 4x4 hoop for you just so that the uh, people with only 4x4 hoops can actually do this. Plus it's quite a small towel topper so 4x4 is a good size. Uh, we'll create the design and then uh, we'll have it bring it into in brilliance and then send it by Wi-Fi to the sewing machine and then import it into Canvas Workspace and cut it out. Exporting it to your scanner cut. Uh, I'm going to cover quite a bit today. So I'll fast forward the boring bits so that they're not quite as boring. <laughs> uh, it'll be a little bit more interesting if we fast forward those bits. So we're going to learn a lot. Stay with me and we'll go and make some applique. Okay, so we're in in brilliance and uh, this is the cupcake. So the free design will be in my resource library and it's a pretty simple, easy design to start with. So you, I think you'll find it fairly easy. Uh, we're going to open and if you've got in brilliance essentials or any of the in brilliance modules, you'll see in the recent, but otherwise you can go into open and just open uh, the version for your machine. I've opened it in PES because I have a brother sewing machine. Uh, well, I have two brother sewing machines, so PES is a good one for me. But you open the one that suits yours. I've also included an SVG for this so that you don't have, if you haven't got Inbrilliance, you can actually just do it without uh, doing it through Inbrilliance. But I want to show you how you can do it if you have got Inbrilliance. Now this this version I've got more than the essential, so you'll see more icons up the top than what uh, you may have. Uh, the essentials will do this part of it though, so all you need is essentials. Okay, so click on your design and over in that top right in the object section, you'll see a number of files and one of them is the position stitch. So it looks like just an outline. So what I circled, it just looks like an outline. And this part here is the wrapper. And it's highlighted in blue on your, on your screen. That yellow box around it is the, is the um, hoop. I've got it as a 4x4. Four four. So on the bottom and the properties, you can see it um, is a color. Click on the color, single click, and it will open this thread box it will pop out and in the second tab you'll see applique position and I inflated this design by 0.5 I did see somewhere that someone recommended 1.5 I found that was too much when I tested it it wasn't nice uh, so and 0.5 was good zero I tested with zero and that wasn't quite enough so 0.5 was a good option for me um, anything up to perhaps 1.5 depending on your design or your your machine, how it sews out, for me, 0.5. And then you save it. So once you've set your inflate position, you go save, and we will save it to um, a place on your computer and, and give it a name that you like or that suits you, that you can find. Uh, I also put SVG, um, which is a scalable vector graphic that's what SVG means and so at the ending I will put SVG and then it's easy to know that your file is an SVG file at a quick glance your machine your computer will let you know that but uh, it's a little bit more difficult and depends what view you've got of your files so if you write SVG um, it makes it much easier and then go okay and I'll zoom back out and you will see it's changed to applique position stitch. You can rename it again, doesn't matter. But basically it is the position stitch that will stitch first on your fabric and then you can use your cutout and apply. So do the same thing for the topper, the cake topper part. If you can't work out which part it is, there is a simulator, stitch simulator, and you can have a little play with that and that might help you. Basically, it's a run stitch that goes around. Uh, you normally or usually get a, um, a placement stitch or a position stitch and then also um, a, the first tack 
around you can choose whether you do that if you've if you've got that in your design I haven't got it in this design looking at my screen uh, <laughs> played with this design a lot <laughs> so I'm going to send it over by Wi-Fi I've um, got two machines one's a six thread and one is a brother M370 with the little four by four hoop and my wife my older six threads about 15 years old so it doesn't have wi-fi at all and on my in brilliance i've got wi-fi to brother <clears throat> make sure it says design i've discovered that if you bring in the be file which is the file that um, is basically the working file for in brilliance it doesn't like that won't go over uh, so just bring in the design it says design in the box and then you can click OK and send it over. So you can see at the top right and the tab, I've got the PES version and go OK. Now I'm not sure if it will do it today. Uh, it usually pops you up a little message to say it's successful where I haven't got my machine on. So we will open Canvas Workspace after I've gone and brought the design in, but I'm going to do Canvas Workspace first. So open Canvas Workspace and this what we're going to bring in is the SVG design. So you can go up to the top left into the file and uh, import from your computer. And then um, the other alternative is that halfway down the side there, you'll see SVG icon and that will work too. Bring the design in and it will pop it in the top left hand corner. So I would grab it and just move it out the way or it, the next one will come in directly on top. So we'll just drag it down the screen a little bit and bring in the topper. You can see it's a topper. I actually put 0.5 in the name so I knew which one was going to be the 0.5 topper because I had a little play with a few different settings. Now pop that out the way. I always like to place them roughly where I think um, I'm going to put my material and I'm going to put one in each corner of my mat so you can see it clearly and then when you're ready go file and transfer transfer export transfer to your machine you've got all the normal options you can do it by um, your usb or in the middle one we'll send it over via internet and there's our successful message so it's been transferred to my cutting machine Okay, so we're over at the cutting machine. I'm just going to retrieve the data. So this little pocket up here to the top right is the cloud or the Wi-Fi. And when we bring it in, there it comes. And you can see where I've placed it. Exactly where I've placed it in Canvas Workspace is how it's come into the scanner cup. I have put a Brother Iron On stabilizer onto my material. It's a bit like a heat and bond as well. Um, I take the paper off and place it face down on my mat and I'm just going to scan my mat and you can use your brayer if you like to just help it firm onto the mat. Um, the iron-ons are quite a bit of a sticky sticky feel so it normally does tack on reasonably if your mat's sticky enough. I'm using my gold tip blade which is the fabric blade you could use your rotary blade if you have one um, the fab the gold tip blade is really quite uh, successful with the poly cotton fabrics that I use I'm using in this project just adjust now you can see your where your materials place you can see I've used a bit of scrap for the the wrapper <laughs> a bit of a cutout that's the handy thing about the scanner in your uh, scanning cart is that you can just adjust it uh, to suit where your material sits and if you can't see it properly go into the tools icon and you can change I've got a little bit of light coming from my window sorry highlighting that uh, and you can change the background whether it's light or dark you can see it's actually a little bit harder to see the fabric with the, the this setting so go back into the tools and pick the one that's best for you and you can see that that darker one you can actually see where the fabric is on your mat. Adjust your placement and once you're happy with it, I might just fiddle with this one a little bit more so it's right in the middle, just there. And uh, you can have more pieces on the mat if you wanted to. You can have as many pieces if you want. 
Um, once you scan your, where your material is, you can just adjust as needed. When you're ready, go OK. And we're going over to Select and Cut. And make sure your half cut is off. I'm not going to worry about doing a test cut today, but you can do a test cut. I've got all the settings as Auto. So the Auto is the default settings. You can see it with the black um, icon, uh, black box around the um, default settings. So the five is default, auto is to set, default, sorry. And you can adjust that if needed. I'm going to use, leave it just on the default settings and go start. Right, it's telling me one minute to cut. So I've sped that up a little bit and we will check whether this is cut through. Now I've used uh, one thing you do need to be careful about is um, sometimes if your material or fabric is a little bit thicker or thinner, one it might not work quite as well. Uh, so it might got, adjust for one thickness and then not quite be right for the other. And I can see my white is not quite right. But I'll just move the camera a little bit. And the pink is... Pink is okay. So I've left my mat in for this. If um, if you take your mat out, you can't run it through very successfully. It often will um, not line up again. As you're peeling your fabric off, make sure you do not stretch it. Um, if it's stretched, then it will not um, perhaps pop into your placement stitch at quite how you expect. And I'm going to fix the white, which didn't cut through properly. So we'll go back into the main screen, we'll go OK. And I am going to remove the piece I don't need to cut again from the mat. So we'll go back into Edit. And we will just highlight that, the red box is around the piece I don't want anymore and hit the trash can or the rubbish bin and remove that piece because we don't want to cut that again. Work your way back into the cut section and here we back, we're back in this screen press start and it will cut that piece of fabric again the white only the white topper and let's have a look how it's gone this time are oh, there perfect ah beautiful good um, so that's that was an easy fix just remember not to remove your mat I always test vinyl anything I've test everything before I move the mat out of the machine or unload it from the machine if it's a little bit hard to lift up, use your spatula uh, and, and once again try not to stretch the fabric. And there it is cut out. It's quite a coarse weave that one. It's a bit of a twill fabric I used. You can see on the back the shiny, I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera. Uh, it's kind of shiny on the back and that's uh, the um, iron on in place there. And we'll head over to the sewing machine. Okay, we're at the sewing machine. And I have actually imported the design into the machine already. I've hooped uh, a stabilizer. It's an iron-on uh, cutaway stabilizer. I've pressed on the back. I've tested the tearaway for this, but I was using thinner material, so not so good. Uh, and I was just testing to see which one I like better. The cutaway was the best. So I've already brought the machine in, but I think, uh, I think I'll think i actually bring it in so you can see me bring it in. So I'll just start again. Let me back out of this and we'll start again. We'll just delete that. So I've used a little pocket. You can see the Wi-Fi button on the right there is connected. And the little pocket with the Wi-Fi symbol will bring it in. Select that. I should have brought my stylus over with me. <laughs> so it's, it's sent through automatically from Imbrilliance. And... Once you've highlighted that, you've got the set icon, choose set. And you can make some adjustments. So you can move it around the, the hoop so it's in a different location. You can also see that dotted square will let you know where it's going to sew, in what space, and we can where it's actually going to place. And you can see I've just run that. I know it's going to place in the center because that's where I've put it, but... This is a good one to test. I use this a lot on my six thread because um, I don't always use all of the hoop. So it's a good way you can adjust it left, right, using those icons on the screen or center it back in. That middle, middle one will center it back in. And we'll go OK and embroider. 
So there's all the stitching um, colors that we've got in the design and we're going to stitch the placement stitches first. So that is one thing you need to make sure is that the placement stitch is right up the top and the first lot of stitching out and not the satin stitch. So make sure your design is in the correct order. So I've got a pink color in the machine. So it'll show up on, on the uh, burgundy red color and we press go. And um, it's, it's uh, sewing out the placement stitch for the wrapper. And then it will finish that wrapper and it will stop. Gives you the opportunity to change something, move something. But we're just going to press go and go ahead. You could have changed the thread if you needed to at that point. And we'll sew the cupcake topper. Um, my machine's a little bit noisier than I thought it was going to be on camera. So I'm going to... Um, reduce some of the noise as <laughs> best I can <laughs> okay so once it's placed um, the position stitch that you needed so I've done two of them at once so you can do piece by piece if you want to I've done both the topper and the wrapper at the same time the top bit and I'm going to use my mini HTV Ron iron press it on got it on the hottest setting and I've popped a bit of baking paper on my um, heat proof mat because uh, I also do sublimation and I don't want anything to get on my design for this. So we'll just protect the design just in case I've managed to get some sublimation on my mat. I don't want it transferred. It will have transferred with heat. So we don't want that. Now I've still got it in the hoop. So I've left it in the hoop. This is quite important too, to leave it in the hoop because re-hooping will move it. It'll put it in a bit different position and you won't line it up again. Just like the machine uh, on your cutting machine when you don't want to take the mat out, leaving it in the hoops the same. So my little mini iron will fit in this 4x4 four four hoop, which is why it's really good. I like, that's why I like it. <laughs> so hold the piece of fabric in place. You can see the position stitch there or the run line and pop the material over so it's fairly even on that. If you see any run stitch popping out, your satin stitch may not cover it. So try and get it aligned as best you can. You do have a little bit of flexibility depending on the size of the satin stitch, the width of it. Just press it down, press your, your um, it's basically a glue that you're putting on the back of the, the applique cutout and we are gluing it to the fabric. So pop the topper on next, the cake top or the icing. This is the icing really, I guess, isn't it? So pop that on, fiddle it, it's not too bad. Fiddle around until you're, you're pretty sure it's okay. And I've put the, as I said, I put the 0.05 um, placement, 0.5 placement, uh, it wasn't 0.05, it was 0.5. And um, that seems to be enough for mine. And it's fit, fitting in this hoop really nicely. And press it down. And I'll turn my iron off. So I don't heat anything I don't want to heat. And I'll set my camera up for over at the sewing machine. Okay, so we're back at the sewing machine and I'm ready to start. Place the presser foot down. So I didn't turn my machine off or shift anything. I've left everything just the same. So it's going to be in exactly the same spot. Didn't unhoop the fabric from the hoop. Uh, nothing's moved. And it will sew in exactly the same spot. So we can press go for the next part of the stitch. And I've used one color for this. I'm a little bit lazy sometimes. But I just thought it would take longer for me to change the um, colors consistently in the in the video so I thought one color is fine I have done one with uh, the multiple colors and it turned out really nice with the multiple colors if you're videoing it's too much effort <laughs> so I'll speed this right up and you will see the different stitching um, capturing the design and making sure your applique fabric is adhered properly to your project 
So I ran it, guys. And I've, it does stop for each one. If you want, want it to stop, uh, you can set it so it doesn't stop. If you set all the same colours, it may not stop. I've got all, each one is set as a different colour, so it will stop in between. And we are done. And it hasn't cut some of my threads. Oh, that, yes, that one's cut. Didn't look like it was cut. If you haven't cut the threads, you just trim them off. If you've uh, got jump stitches, just trim them off. And you can see the one on the left there, I'm showing you both, uh, is with all the colours. It's really pretty with all the colours. It looks like little sprinkles, little heart sprinkles. Uh, but for the video, the one in one colour was just fine. Makes it much easier. Would have fiddled and changing colour. Uh, one good thing about my six thread is I've got the six threads there and it would have just sewed it out great. And I would have had to actually manually pause it myself on my six thread, whereas the other one doesn't. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that video, that tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one. This is not probably the last one of the series. I've got a couple more I would like to share with you, a couple more ideas. So I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya. Bye.